Ready to dip your toe into developing the Azure RM provider? Here's how you go about debugging it. What's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, nedinthecloud.com. And today we're going to be talking about debugging the Azure RM provider. Recently, I've gotten into learning Go a bit and even developed my own module checking tool called TerraHash. Check out the video or the blog post about that. And as part of learning Go, I thought I would dip my toe into the world of Terraform providers. And what better provider to start with than the Azure RM provider that I use for so many of my demonstrations. It certainly has its issues and maybe I can help out with those issues a little bit. So in this video, we're gonna walk through how to properly set up the debugger in VS Code so that you can troubleshoot issues in the Azure RM provider. But before we get into that, I have two quick things. First of all, I will be leading a panel about modules at HashiConf this year. So check out HashiConf, a little more information about that later. And also, I would like to recommend a newsletter called Let's Do DevOps. It's by my co-host on the Day 2 DevOps podcast, Kyler Middleton, and she sends out missives every week about interesting posts that she's created, what's going on in the larger DevOps community, and also some updates about the podcast. So if that sounds interesting, link is down in the description. All right, now let's get into how to debug the Azure RM provider. Debugging a provider for Terraform is a little bit different than debugging other types of code because of the way that Terraform interacts with its providers. Before we get into the guts of it, I want to take a moment to thank Drew Mullen. He's a fellow HashiCorp ambassador, and he wrote up an excellent post on setting up debugging for the AWS provider with VS Code. However, the Azure RM provider is a little bit different. The process is similar, but it is a little bit different. So that's what I'm going to be showing today. Before you get started with debugging the provider on VS Code, you're going to need a few things in place. For starters, you're going to need VS Code. I kind of feel like that's a given, but hey, you know, thought I'd mention it. You'll also need Go installed. Also kind of a given, all providers for Terraform are written in Go, so you need to have Go installed. Once you have those two, you're going to want to install the VS Code Go extension. It includes a bunch of helpful tools for just writing Go in general, but it also includes the tool Delve, which is necessary for properly setting up debugging. You don't have to understand what Delve does, it just needs to be there. You'll also need a forked instance of the Azure RM provider that's cloned to the correct directory so that things can build properly. The correct directory is going to be your go path, whatever that's currently set to, slash source, slash github.com, slash HashiCorp, slash Terraform provider Azure RM. You don't have to write that down, that is in the contributing guide for the provider, but just thought I'd mention it here. Once you have all of that set up, you're ready to actually start the analysis and debugging process for the provider. Now, even though I run Windows, I prefer to do my Go development in WSL v2. So I have an Ubuntu instance running inside of Windows where I do my actual Go development. And that's because in my experience, most of the Go tooling that I encounter or at least the instructions, is written for Mac or Linux. And Windows is kind of an afterthought. So my examples are going to be using WSL v2. Fair warning on that. Now, how does it work? Since we are debugging the provider and not the Terraform core binary itself, the first consideration you have to make is how do you let Terraform know that it should send its provider plugin requests to the debugger that's listening and not to the usual provider plugin that you have installed in the .terraform directory. Terraform uses gRPC to communicate with the providers. So the communication coming from the core binary when it's running, it sends requests over a gRPC channel to the providers. So what happens during the debugging process is that Delve fires up a gRPC session with a listener on a Unix socket. Once the de debugger is done setting up, 
it provides a value to you called TF reattach providers. And that value will tell Terraform, here's where to send requests for this specific provider. So it's not going to send all requests to the debugger, just the ones for the Azure RM provider. Once you have that TF reattach providers value, you set it as an environment variable, and then Terraform looks for that and uses the debugger instead of the standard plugin. Which means you can just run your standard Terraform commands like normal, and if that command happens to interact with the Azure RM provider, it will hit the debugger, and if you have breakpoints set in your code, it will pause and wait for you to resume. The official Terraform documents for debugging providers tells you all of this, but it uses really fancy terms that were mostly foreign to me. So I tried to simplify it down for someone who's not super familiar with Go or with debugging, which is me. So let's walk through actually setting it up. HashiConf is coming this October to Boston, and I really hope you'll join me. I'll be presenting a panel on best practices for module design, hosting subject matter experts who have contributed to the development of some of the most popular modules on the public registry. Now, what I love most about HashiConf is the scale of the event. It's bigger than your average user group, but it's small enough to feel intimate. With a projected attendance of 1,200 people, you won't be lost in the shuffle, overwhelmed by massive crowds, or find yourself walking for hours between session halls. Instead, what you'll find is a tight-knit community of like-minded individuals who are looking to share and learn about all things cloud and DevOps. Every time I go to HashiConf, I come back feeling refreshed and full of new ideas that I want to go out and implement. Now, whether you're looking to network with other professionals, reconnect with the Hug community, or learn about the latest developments in Terraform or Vault, I hope that I'll see you October 14th through 16th in Boston for HashiConf 2024. VS Code gets its debugging settings from a file stored in the .VS Code directory of your current workspace. So if we look over in VS Code, I have the .VS Code directory open. Inside of that directory are two files. One is the launch.json, and the other one is the private.env. We'll come to that in a second. The launch.json file is where you can add configurations that you can select when you want to launch the debugger. I have just one configuration set up here, but you can have multiple configurations depending on how you're trying to debug things. Inside the configuration, it tells it what type of language is involved here, what type of request, in this case, launch, what mode to launch it in, debug, where is your program located? In our case, it's located in the workspace folder. Any environment variables you wanna put directly in here, but we're gonna use a separate file for that. And then any arguments you want to pass as part of the debugging. Now, the way that the Azure RM provider is configured, it looks for the flag dash debuggable to launch in debug mode. Finally, show log will show you the debug log as it streams by. And then the last one, the env file, points it at a file that has the environment settings we want to configure when it's, when it's launched in debug mode. Let's take a look at that file. Inside the private.env file, there's three settings in here. The first is to configure acceptance testing for Terraform. This just lets Terraform know that it shouldn't incur additional charges when acceptance testing is being run. And I think that's an implementation detail for the provider, but you just have to set this to some value. We set it equal to one. The TF log is being set to the info level. If you want to set it to a higher log level, you can, but since we're doing this in debug mode, we have access to everything that's happening anyway, so we don't need a ton of additional logging. And then lastly, there are some Go flags that are specific to Go. I don't know exactly what it does. Like I said, I'm kind of new at this, but this setting seems to work, so use it if it makes sense for you. So we have our two files in place, which means when we go to the debug in the menu, I now have that named debug configuration under run and debug. 
And to launch it, all I have to do is click on the green start button and that launches the debugger. Now to see the launch process, I can bring up the terminal and from there, I'm going to select the debug console. And this gives me the current status of the launching of the debugger. It's not done yet, so it's going to take a little bit of time for it to get that ready. While we're doing that, let's take a look at the example configuration I'm going to be using to interact with my debug process. Now, like I said earlier, once we have our special environment variable set and the debug process is running, we don't have to do anything different about our Terraform commands. We can run those as normal. So I have a very basic Terraform configuration here that uses the Azure RM provider, and it simply creates a resource group. That's it. The first thing we need to do is to set that environment variable. So I'll pull up the terminal here and let's go back to the debug screen to see if the debugger has finished setting up. Back in the debugger, we can see in the debug console that it has finished setting up and it now gives us that value for TF reattach providers. I'm gonna copy that value now and we'll export that value over here. And before I hit enter, just to point out what it actually says in here, it looks like a map structure with the key registry Terraform IO HashiCorp Azure RM. So it's specifying that particular provider. And if that provider is being referenced, then send it via the protocol gRPC version five with this process ID with test set to true to the address network Unix string, and then a path to the temporary plugin that's been created by the debugger. So I'll hit enter here. And now Terraform is going to use that temporary plugin for anything having to do with the Azure RM provider. With that in mind, now we can run some basic Terraform commands. So I'm going to run Terraform init to initialize. And if we look at the output here, I'm actually overriding the provider already through some development overrides, but it's not even going to use that. So if you have that set up previously for when you were trying to do things with a custom developed provider, don't worry about that. This environment variable, the TF reattach providers, overrides the, your development overrides that you might have in your .terraform RC file. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry. But we can also see that it did not download the provider from the public registry either. It's going to be using the provider that's listening on the debugger. So now let's run a Terraform plan. And this is going to pause halfway through. And the reason it's going to pause is because I put a breakpoint in the code for the provider. So let's jump back to that instance of VS Code. I added a breakpoint to the provider.go file that establishes the client that talks to Azure. The last thing it does is return that client. So I put a breakpoint there. On the left, we have access to all of the variables that are set inside of provider.go, so we can expect, inspect any of those. We also have access to watch things and the call stack if we want to look through that as well. So we can see that the flow is coming from our configuration into this provider. It's hitting a breakpoint and it's stopping. Once I have inspected things and figured out what's going on, I can hit the resume button or continue. That will either jump to the next breakpoint or if that's the end of the breakpoints that it hits, it will resume operations and finish what it's doing. If we go back to the example configuration, now it's showing the end of the plan, which was one to add. It's going to add that resource group. If you're all done with debugging for now, we can go back to the provider instance of VS Code and click on the stop button, and that will stop the debug process. When you launch it again, you will get a different TF reattach provider value. So bear that in mind, you'll have to reset that environment variable. And that's it. You're now debugging the Azure RM provider. From here, you can add additional breakpoints, you can inspect values, you can look at the stack calls. It's really gonna depend on what issue you're troubleshooting. I've found this invaluable for tracing down where an issue is occurring between Terraform Core, the provider, and the Azure API. I'll include some additional links down in the description to get you started with the troubleshooting process if you want to dig into the provider a little bit more. That's going to do it for me for today. If you enjoyed this, if you want more videos around provider developments, 
let me know. I'm happy to do them as I'm learning as I go, and I'm happy to share that with you. Till next time, keep calm, Terraform on. Wearing my Microsoft MVP hoodie today because I hear developers wear hoodies, and you know, it's a Microsoft thing. <laughs>